Good evening, and welcome to the new Bugaisky Hour. I'm happy to be back in Pristina to examine important global and local developments that affect the lives of all Kosovars. And today I will be discussing some key political questions with three analysts. Our guest panelists on the Bugaisky hot seat are Ardian Arifai, advisor to President-elect Hashim Tachi, Ad Adriate Kalmendi, analyst, journalist, and TV host, and Giulietta Muscolai, professor of law and a former justice on Kosovo's constitutional court. But first, my political commentary on an important international topic is entitled Europe Splintering. A British exit, or Brexit, from the European Union is now a distinct possibility. This will not only generate widespread economic uncertainty throughout the continent, but it can also encourage other states to follow London out of the Union. There are two schools of thought on a potential Brexit. Those that believe that it will weaken an unraveled European Union, and those who argue that it will actually strengthen the European core. The pessimists assert that a Brexit would damage the rest of Europe. It would disengage the world's fifth largest economy from its biggest market and weaken EU security by removing a significant defense spender and foreign policy actor. Instructively, while President Vladimir Putin is keen on the Brexit to weaken the EU, President Barack Obama strongly opposes it. A disunited and less secure EU will also seek to discourage other countries from following the UK. This could actually prove counterproductive. British Foreign Secretary Philip Harmon has warned that a Brexit could lead to a dom domino effect by creating a template for other Eurosceptic parties elsewhere in the EU to become more mainstream. A contrary stream of opinion in Europe argues that a Brexit would actually be a valuable stimulant for the rest of the EU. They argue that other waivers should follow the UK so that the remaining core develops into a more integrated bloc through a fiscal union and a political federation. Proponents of a core Europe argue that the policy of opting out from some EU provisions, which London has pursued, should be eliminated because it simply contributes to division and confusion. By attempting to accommodate the disparate positions of its many members, the EU has become timid and ineffective and unable to pursue deeper integration. Indeed, keeping Britain inside the EU would make it more difficult for other members to implement the necessary reforms to repair the Union's structural shortcomings. Once the UK and other obstructionist countries are allowed to leave, the original founding members, particularly Germany and France, will pursue more vigorous multinational integration. In such a scenario, some believe the EU will become, quote, leaner but meaner, unquote. Despite such projections, a smaller EU with a more restricted market is likely to become a second-rate player on the global scene, and its alliance with the US would be significantly diminished. It is time now for the Bugaiski hot seat with our three distinguished panelists, Ardian Arifai, advisor to President-elect Hashim Tachi, Adriati Kalmendi, analyst, journalist, and TV host, and Giulietta Muscolai, professor of law and former justice on Kosovo's constitutional court. Welcome to the show, all three of you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I, a lot of ground to cover, and I wanted to look at some pressing political questions that will obviously have a resonance and an impact on Kosovo's evolution as a, as a democratic state, the youngest state in Europe. And I want to begin with the ongoing political standoff between government and opposition. Uh, and it's a question that I am often asked in Washington when people, when people do look at the Balkans. One of the first questions they ask is, what is going on in Kosovo? So the question is, does this conflict, this standoff between government and opposition, does it, in your view, destabilize Kosovo? Uh, or is it, in a, in a strange sort of way, an indication that the public is more widely involved or wants to be involved in the political process, decision-making process. Maybe I'll begin with, with you. Okay, thank you. Well, what's that saying? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. So it means that there are two 
uh, ways out of this uh, current situation can really make us stronger if we navigate um, uh, s uh, smartly, uh, wisely from this uh, current situation. It can help us uh, draw a very clear line what are the practices that we install here in dealing with any open issues that we mm -hmm. have. Uh, what are the red lines in our political engagement here? Mm -hmm. uh, well, so um, if we look at it from that perspective, actually it can be a, a healthy exercise for the uh, new, new democracy, young democracy in, mm -hmm. in Kosovo. As long as state institutions keep functioning and um, are, are able to uh, continue working, mm -hmm. again, as I said, uh, eventually, this might turn out at, as a good exercise. It's making Kosovo look ugly at present, let's be honest. I, we, we all agree on that. Right. But again, long term, if we navigate wisely, we can come out uh, stronger. It certainly makes the decisions, particularly on this agreement with Serbia, much more, let's say, interesting or much more widely discussed than it otherwise would have been, I presume. Do you think it's drawing more people into the political process? Well, um, it doesn't look so. Uh, people are very much afraid. Uh, people are very much upset with uh, developments. People see that uh, Kosovo is not uh, actually developing its democracy. We are a country with no democratic tradition. Uh, with the only tradition we have is authoritarian rule here. And now we are struggling for 10 years actually to build democracy. And what we are facing right now, uh, inability actually in a democratic way to solve our uh, problems. Uh, what is uh, going on actually to both groups, uh, I mean, did big, big uh, mistakes. Uh, political parties into power, the government and the coalition, um, because of uh, having two-thirds majority in the parliament, mm -hmm. they felt that uh, actually they behaved in a very arrogant way. So for the opposition, was no meaning even to be in the parliament because it was no space enough to debate. Mm -hmm. After all, I mean, according to our constitution, our democracy is deliberative democracy. And there's no space actually for deliberation. And of course, the coalition has the votes, but without even allowing others to be heard and to discuss issues properly by actually using uh, parliamentary rules in a very brutal way, uh, of course, uh, the, the end is uh, the one that we face because when there is no debate, then you use, um, I mean, uh, unacceptable methods. So, so that it's not the justifiable, is, what you're saying, it's understandable, the opposition. Yeah, is. it's understandable, of yeah. course. We do not uh, justify and people mm. are very uh, much upset. So uh, we, of course, we need to struggle and tradition cannot be built in uh, uh, instantly. But, uh, I mean, uh, we, uh, we have to have a place to debate things. No, the parliament is not enough. We have uh, to debate all these issues in a different way. And uh, what I liked actually is the proposal of uh, several uh, members of the parliament uh, from different political parties, from position and opposition, that there is a need for real uh, table to discuss issues and uh, not to uh, and not to allow actually to be in the debate only uh, political parties, but civil society groups, journalists, and uh, business organizations. Mm. You mean some sort of round table? Of course, it? round yeah. table, something very similar to what happened in uh, Poland after mm -hmm. the fall of communism. Adi, what's your, what's your view on well, this? You, you mentioned that are people more interested in politics now mm -hmm. with this, what we are witnessing in this last two years, I would say, I would say yes, there is more interest, but we are not seeing that politics is getting better. Mm -hmm. People are more involved in politics, but are also more disgusted by what they are seeing mm -hmm. uh, in politics. So I think all what happened after the last election started in wrong foot, because we've seen a standoff of former opposition coming together to form uh, a block together mm -hmm. in order to make PDK go in opposition, but that 
couldn't succeed. So after six months, we saw big coalition, PDK with LDK, and it started already with mass protests from the opposition. So it was signaling something that this mandate will not be uh, the one that, that can develop the country or work towards the real needs of the citizens. And uh, as we said, we are seeing now the second episode of that with tear gas and everything because the opposition is feeling that they are having no voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is strong majority and arrogant majority because the two parties that are in power that have the coalition uh, used to be in power more or less all the time after the war. Mm -hmm. except for three years when AAK was forming the government with LDK. Mm -hmm. So a lot of issues happened in between. The dialogue with Serbia is not on the best track. Mm -hmm. So we need to, we are seeing both sides making mistakes, but by having both sides continuing making mistakes, I don't see how we are going to any good. So I believe, yes, they, they should sit down, but have clear, objectives, what they want to achieve. Uh, I agree that maybe it's better to go to early elections, but not to go in the elections just to say, okay, after 45 days, we're having elections in this climate because we are seeing the antagonism spreading from two political blocks to the people on the streets and the, the, the population is angry with what's going on. So if we go to the election with this atmosphere without a political agreement, then again, we don't see how no. we are going to go to another episode, but, but who, the better one. I'm back to you in a second, I just want to follow up. But who would gain? You know, is it the opposition or the government that has gained more support as a result of the standoff, as a result of the conflicts in Parliament? You can never tell because I am saying people are really disgusted with what they are seeing in politics, and I believe both even, sides, even the turnoff yeah. in the elections will not be as the one that was in last elections, if we are not seeing some regrouping or some new political uh, uh, elite forming a political party or a list, mm -hmm. because these are people who have been on and off on power or in, in uh, mm -hmm. central government or in local governments, and we are seeing more or less the same people for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot pride ourselves that Kosovo is doing well these 16 years, it's the fault of these people who are now in power or are in the opposition and were in power. Arjen, you wanted to, to jump in there? Uh, just go back to what I mentioned earlier. We need to establish the red lines. And one clear uh, red line here is that we cannot establish the practice of using violence, violence as po for political means, mm -hmm. as a political uh, uh, tool. Um, so if we go to elections now with uh, situation where we are now with such polarized uh, uh, environment, political environment, that most likely we are going to establish uh, violence as a legitimate means. And this is why I said we have to be careful and be wise. If we manage wisely this current situation, this polarization, then we can uh, come up stronger from this. But we need to establish now good practices, as both have said. We are still a new democracy. We're establishing uh, good practices. This is why we have to be very wise how we manage this, uh, this uh, ongoing situation. And this is why it's good that we manage to bridge the, this polarization that exists for now and then look forward to other solutions. Well, what is your view of sort of extra parliamentary politics? You know, these street politics, rallies, demonstrations. I presume, I mean, this is all within the mandate or let's say within the the parameters of a democratic structure as long as things don't turn violent. Could you maybe address that? Well, um, I mean, the, there, there are many people that uh, see that the only way to become involved in politics mm -hmm. is um, actually going out into the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also a, big co a consequence of uh, arrogant way of uh, governing here. Uh, because of having these two-thirds of seats, uh, they feel that they were able, uh, I mean the government uh, feels that it is able to do whatever uh, it wants. Plus, actually, the behavior of the government towards the opposition and towards uh, the supporters that we see out into the street, somehow they look at this issue not as political crisis, but they look 
at this as an issue of law and order. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, really very bad. And this could lead uh, even to civil war. Uh, what I see this happening here is uh, very similar to what uh, uh, has been happening uh, for a long time in Africa. Uh, this, uh, I mean, there you have, of course, uh, powerful political parties that always win elections, and uh, the opposition does not have space actually to at least debate issues of concern. Mm -hmm. The people, and uh, here uh, we have to look at uh, this in a little different way. Uh, we have a uh, public university right now, uh, the largest one in the region, uh, that uh, has its own issues, uh, that has, is struggling for a long time to uh, elect uh, the rector, the president of the university. And he, it is like a bump that no one is looking at. It could explode any day. And it depends, I mean, all political parties have their share there. So it is also led by political parties and not really, I mean, people from academia. So uh, this could endanger even more the situation. So I do not see actually this as an opportunity to strengthen our democracy. This is uh, what we have is extremely dangerous. Adriatic, do you see a hot spring coming or a hot summer? Uh, I would say that I agree when, when uh, Mr. Arifa is saying what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, mm -hmm. the, the famous Nietzsche quote. But mm -hmm. I would say that also we need to adjust to this because we, have, we should not be afraid of going to new elections for everyone to reconfirm where they are standing. And I do agree that we cannot go to early elections because someone is committing forms of violence. We have to go to elections because the political situation was, is so divided and one side is blaming the other for treason. They are mentioning treason. Mm -hmm. There have been two agreements which are problematic. The one is confirmed to be very problematic in the way it was signed mm -hmm. because we have the constitutional I want you to come back to this on the, yeah. that said in tw uh, 23 uh, 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 issues, they were not according to constitution mm -hmm. completely. And before all that, we heard the former uh, deputy prime minister saying that they will, they will adjust the issue even uh, or even go further to resign if only one word in that agreement is against the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So this led to the situation where we see the opposition gathering people on the street to protest and to ask for new elections. And if we see a little bit not go further, only in the region, we saw that there was no harm of having early elections, for example, every two or three years. If you have good policy, you have good program, you will get your supporters and you can win elections or if you do not perform well, someone else might come to power. But what we are seeing now is the opposition by mostly dealing with only two issues mm -hmm. that are not, frankly, the most uh, intriguing issues or the issues that concern most of the, of the population. They are giving the free pass to the government, indeed, because there is no accountability, the normal accountability. Uh, people have no information on what the government is really doing. Mm -hmm. And even the media, they are setting the agenda of the political parties, for making us to focus in only these two issues for almost a year now. And life goes on. We are not seeing Kosovo against Roma. We are not seeing foreign investment. We are not seeing new uh, employment. So you're stuck. So we are stuck with two issues that we see no end. Ardial, what do you think of early elections? Would that solve the problem, unstick the situation? Uh, as I said, uh, I think the situation is so polarized that I don't see that elections would actually solve that polarization. Mm. On the contrary, it, it risks actually uh, creating even a wider gap between two sides. This way, it's much helpful if we can bridge the two poles now and for example, uh, electoral reform can be one platform where all mm. could come together and agree on new uh, law or um, even constitutional changes needed. Uh, and after that, actually agree on new elections. 
but it's, it's necessary that we actually overcome this uh, polarization before. We, uh, again, every, if we have elections now, mm. we might see, we seem as we are rewarding violence, as violence is the, the only uh, reason why we are going to new elections. And we should not allow violence to be installed as a political tool here. Judith, what constitutional or other changes, electoral law changes, could you envisage? Uh, well, I do not think that uh, position and opposition agrees with the possibility of uh, amending uh, either the law in elections or uh, constitution regarding uh, elections, especially uh, election of the president. Mm. Uh, one should understand, actually, even though, uh, I mean, it is an European and written rule that you cannot uh, change uh, electoral laws and have elections immediately after that. You mm -hmm. should have a year after that in order to accommodate with the uh, changes. Uh, as uh, far as uh, these agreement with, uh, agreements with Serbia are concerned, uh, this, the latest agreement on the association of municipalities uh, uh, is the agreement that uh, we have this uh, conflict, or at least opposition and position behave like this is uh, the reason mm -hmm. for uh, conflict. Uh, I, uh, of course, the uh, Constitutional Court actually drafted a decision, uh, adopted actually a decision that is uh, quite interesting. It's more uh, manual, like how you mm -hmm. should build. Uh, 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 the statute of the association than a real judgment solving issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, of course, in several uh, places, uh, the Constitutional Court ha uh, says that uh, the agreement on the principles has some uh, provisions that are uh, un not in accordance mm. with the Constitution, right. but uh, uh, it is uh, one think that everyone and especially uh, the government is not doing enough PR to make people understand that on the, in the principles actually it was a very strong provision that uh, based on these principles uh, the statute of uh, the association is to be drafted and before it will be promulgated by a governmental decree, it will first mm -hmm. go to the Constitutional Court to be uh, reviewed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is interesting because uh, with these principles, you give more powers to the Constitutional Court. Uh, and of course, I mean, it, you don't need to make any constitutional changes for that because uh, governmental decrees could be uh, reviewed by the Constitutional Court. However, I, for me, it was a really big thing that Serbia did agree on uh, the powers of the Kosovo Constitutional Court to mm -hmm. review mm -hmm. the principles. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, big thing that the government never used, actually, for its PR. own propaganda. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was wondering, I mean, why the government is not using very uh, important things to get the support of the people. On the other hand, actually, this, uh, I mean, this issue went to the Constitutional Court prematurely because of uh, the political conflict. Uh, the president of Kosovo, I mean, uh, uh, submitted this uh, request, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, our president uh, late in the last two years is not non-stop actually uh, using, has been using the Constitutional Court as uh, her own advisory body, which is not. Uh, if you are not able and stuck to properly lead the country, I mean, you should build your own um, legal advisory body mm -hmm. and not use constitutional court for everything because I mean for now it is fine we overcome problems one by one but for the future of the of such an important body uh, it's uh, it could be dangerous yeah Let, let's stick to the now that we've uh, you, you start talking about the agreement with Serbia I mean how long would this process take Maybe I'd have to, uh, either you can answer this. How long would this process take, the review of the Constitutional Court, government response to that, acceptance somehow in Parliament? I mean, is the government going to 
uh, open up a round table, as you've mentioned, to bring in other views, to make some amendments in this agreement? I'm not seeing that the government is actually working on that because as it is uh, obliging in this agreement, there needs to be a statute and that, that statute to go for some kind of reviewing mm -hmm. at the Constitutional Court, but we still don't see that there is this working group mm -hmm. established to draft the statute. Maybe we don't have that information, but mm -hmm. nothing has been said. And I believe inten intentionally it is not being said or worked anything just to postpone the process and to see where we are going with this mm -hmm. uh, opposition that is coming from three opposition parties. Mm -hmm. And if we go back again, to the elections, we, we have both sides here, the, the government or the coalition parties that are saying we cannot uh, kneel in front of violence from the opposition, but the opposition saying the same, we cannot mm. kneel and uh, 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 close our eyes with the government that is breaking the constitution. So which is stronger in this uh, case? So while we see that previous two mandates did not end Mm -hmm. full term for four years, I don't see why we cannot go again in early elections by having, as I said in the uh, very beginning, by having a, a compromise agreement within main political parties that will uh, uh, have on its, uh, itself also the issue of where we got these problems in first instance, the negotiations with Serbia. So maybe it's better to go back to the idea of forming um, a group that will consist with working group of some kind, yeah. with uh, uh, government mm -hmm. parties and also the opposition, as we had in Atisari process, right. and that was successful. And then to have also an agreement on how we move on with these electoral reforms, right. I would say maybe we have to think about of who has the right to form the government. Based on the, the last issues that we saw after these elections, we had problems who will need to, to appoint Speaker of the Parliament, who can have, is the coalition something has been formed before the elections or after the, the election, mm -hmm. who forms the uh, parliamentary group. So maybe think about one other issue to make who wins the elections the party of the coalition has a right to have the prime minister and legal experts maybe can can give us some let, more let, ideas let, how let, to do let's, that. Let's stay with the agreement with, with Serbia and the Serb minority question. Okay. Adrian, is there something going on behind the scenes that we don't know? Is there going to be a working group of some kind? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not uh, part of the executive anymore. Sure. Uh, so I wouldn't But know. you hear things that we may not hear. Uh, so. well, not really. <laughs> Kosovo is rather small. <laughs> Everybody and actually. Yeah. Journalists know very well what's happening in the media. Right. I'm not aware of any concrete step, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a very legitimate question, not only regarding the association, but the, the whole uh, dialogue with, with Serbia. Right. I guess one point where we all agree is that there's no alternative to dialogue, uh, but the rest is that how do we continue with the dialogue? There are already ideas presented, uh, put forward uh, also by the president-elect that actually we make the whole process more dynamic um, and instead of having every three months uh, a meeting of the political leadership, why not actually do the opposite? Have one big meeting of political leadership where they would lay out uh, foundations or the framework for normalization of relations. He laid out four elements, didn't he, at his talk in The Hague recently? Yeah, okay. that, that's of the president uh, in general, not only of the dialogue, yes. Yeah. Well, I would be very happy to elaborate. Yeah, yeah, if you could yeah. just mention what those four, very briefly, what those elements are, because this yes. ties in with what we're talking about. Uh, one would be, first, rule of law in, mm -hmm. in Kosovo. Um, second would be, of course, dialogue with Serbia, what we just said, to make it more dynamic, to really become a framework of normalization of relations, not mm -hmm. be an obstacle for internal political mm -hmm. uh, development and dialogue. Third would be regional cooperation. I started with the Berlin process mm -hmm. uh, to uh, make it more uh, intensive and broader than just um, infrastructure or as it is now. And fourth would be a more constructive dialogue between Kosovo, the region and EU mm -hmm. uh, to work with EU uh, to explain why 
also EU benefits from actually Western Balkans joining the EU? What are the benefits uh, like um, a European version of Islam, for example, that mm. we can offer to the EU mm. or, to, or to Europe in general? and for other forms of cooperation in security sector and similar. So mm -hmm. these are the, the four main points. Of course, dialogue, regional cooperation is part of this. It's, it strikes me, um, and what you were saying earlier about involving civil society, that one of the problems here is that the opposition or part of parliament doesn't feel involved in this process. So, so how can this be furthered, not only in the agreement with Serbia, but in all these other ways in which major decisions have to be made? Well, uh, uh, of course, uh, it's not the government the one that uh, has to uh, encourage um, actually the m to have more vibrant civil society uh, in general. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the government is obliged actually to open the door for real public participation. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, uh, if you look at our constitution, uh, it is, I think, one of the rare constitution that has uh, uh, a specially uh, uh, guaranteed right to public participation. Mm -hmm. And everyone is forgetting about this. Mm -hmm. uh, the government is actually being very arrogant by uh, actually going to take part in the talks without even discussing issues properly with civil society organizations. And there are hundreds of ways to do that. In this way, uh, people would feel that they are actually involved. Uh, issues um, that are discussed with Serbia are our issues, mm -hmm. and they do not have the right to take away and actually deal with these important issues uh, only with uh, Serbian le leadership without even asking the people, without informing the people. Uh, they are, for example, uh, the 2013 agreement is a very important agreement. Unfortunately, it has a provision that is extremely, um, uh, extremely bad and uh, against uh, the European Convention on Human Rights. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very similar one to, uh, uh, to uh, a provision that Bosnia had and uh, is uh, now suffering. Uh, for example, uh, by naming uh, the ethnic group uh, ethnic regarding, vetoes, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. not only ethnic Entity veto, vetoes and ethnic but quotas, for example, yeah. who has the right, right. to be uh, commander of police sure. in northern part of Kosovo, sure. and in the agreement it says clearly it should be a Serb. Mm -hmm. So what, what, I mean, how do policemen feel there, no matter how good you are, you know from the beginning that never ever you would become chief poli mm -hmm. police officer because you're not a Serb. Mm -hmm. I mean, how Bosnians feel in that part of Kosovo and Albanians There's and the rest. There's a Jewish and a of Roma course, candidates yeah, who are challenging uh, this. Yeah, yeah. In, mm -hmm. uh, in Bosnia. So, and uh, plus, several years later, our government is doing exactly the same mistake. Mm -hmm. How come they never actually discuss this issue with, uh, with the people? Mm -hmm. uh, now we do not know. I mean, uh, there are some excellent uh, advisors that work for uh, our leaders. However, I mean, even excellent advisors, if they do not communicate with anybody else, could make uh, serious mistakes. And that was a serious mistake, and we are going to face a lot of consequences, the consequences that now Bosnia, because of similar provision, is facing today. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, otherwise, I mean, uh, uh, talks with Serbia are a necessity, and it, uh, I mean, we have to continue with talks forever mm -hmm. and with negotiations until both countries become uh, part of EU. So it is an ongoing process and it's going to last stuck for with many, many, yeah. <laughs> but we have to. I mean, you talk to your neighbor. But there there sure. should be a real timetable when we are going to see the end of this dialogue mm -hmm. because this dialogue cannot go on forever and ever. Now we are seeing that Kosovo is playing only in the tempo that Serbia wants mm -hmm. because Serbia has a clearer path towards Brussels, EU, and we can move forward as much as Serbia wants to open chapters with the EU. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we are not seeing any clarity before people who are involved from the government in the talks were saying that in 2016, this year, we will have the legal binding agreement be signed by two states, 
that will allow Kosovo to become a member of EU and other international organizations. That is not being discussed at all now. And we see actually uh, the backdrop of uh, achieving the normalization process with Serbia with the UNESCO episode, where we are talking that we are working towards normalization of relations between two countries that still do not recognize one another, we see that Serbia is using every opportunity to block, to undermine our statehood, or to, to block a normal life for Kosovo, because in the end, UNESCO is not so important as some other organization that Kosovo is already a member. Mm -hmm. But that gives a clear message that Serbia is not interested to see this normalization process going further, and they want to keep Kosovo as isolated as they can by using their methods. Well, it's not just, just, it's not just Serbia <coughs> blocking Kosovo. Kosovo seems to be blocking itself from well, everything that's been said, which, which suits purposes of the nationalists in, in Belgrade, of course. I mean, the longer this conflict, this standoff continues, the less time there is for other important moves, legislation, uh, executive decisions regarding EU entry. H how do you see this? Th this really needs to be unblocked for Kosovo to move towards the EU. Oh, well, just going back to the dialogue process itself, mm -hmm. this is why actually there, there are, there's this talk and uh, President Lech just uh, spoke about it in his speech in mm -hmm. uh, the Hague Institute for Global Justice, again inviting for a more dynamic process and actually where we would have uh, one big meeting between the leaders, of course with support of EU and why not Washington, so that we have one agreement on normalization of relations where both Serbia and Kosovo would agree not to block each other on, on their membership. In I'm sorry, the they did agree once. Uh, but <laughs> this would be that uh, big uh, agreement that would become a framework but and then the, co the dialogue would continue on a, a technical level only. Mm. Um, so, but again, we go back to sort of stalemate that we have here in mm. Kosovo and what it is costing Kosovo and what do we do to overcome it? Um, Again, everything should, every solution should be found within uh, Kosovo institutions um, and not outside, especially not by using violence, uh, uh, be it in the assembly, the parliament, or out in the street. Um, the president, the current president, um, the president-elect have invited for a dialogue between the, the parties. Uh, there, there are grounds on which they can uh, sit down, talk, and, and uh, discuss, we just mentioned electoral reforms, regardless how long would that take. It's a good ground for discussion. It's a good ground. And Advetic was, again, saying perhaps it's not the right idea to go to elections now without having, without any changes in the electoral law. Well, let me jump in here. Is there anything the international uh, players can do, uh, Brussels and Washington in particular? Mm, uh, they've done enough. Uh, or would this be seen as more. interference somehow? They shouldn't, they shouldn't yeah. do more. And it's very welcoming that they actually are uh, stepping back and allowing Kosovo actually to grow, to learn from mm -hmm. its own mm -hmm. experience, even if that make, uh, means learning from your own mistakes. But again, the international community also was very clear that violence is not acceptable, there should not be sure. violence. And they have invited um, for the recently, the last one was I think the German ambassador mm -hmm. who gave an example uh, from Germany where there are cases when usually trade unions and government don't talk uh, for many months yeah. on particular issues, but there, there would be a commission that would be established and that would start mediating and mm -hmm. uh, trying to bring uh, two sides, two parties together and actually dialoguing, talking. Let me just jump in with, uh, with another question. Do you, do you have a comment to this? Uh, well, uh, yes, I do. I, I do feel that uh, we need international support to mm. somehow mediate in this uh, mm. problem that we uh, are facing. But the mediator, I do not think that should come from uh, the governments, but uh, from uh, real good, uh, I mean, organizations, mm. uh, non-profit organizations, mm both in the uh, EU and in the United States. And uh, I think there is a way to involve as many as possible civil society actors uh, that uh, both the position and opposition could see how strong uh, the people uh, are in a way. And uh, as far as elections are concerned, of course, we need to have uh, um, elections uh, 
I mean, prematurely. We have always have uh, extraordinary elections here. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's not a big deal, but not now. Mm -hmm. because uh, the situation is so fragile with all this violence, we cannot have uh, proper elections. But what we, I mean, one of the we can topics... We and discuss the date and discuss of the, the issues date that needs to be because fulfilled the before most the date. dangerous thing is to allow, because the government is in that position, the coalition, to set a date on elections whenever they want. They simply can dissolve the, I mean, parliament themselves. Mm -hmm. But this is dangerous because usually it happens everywhere in every par parliamentary system. I mean, actually, by having this power to set up a date yourself, you know actually what the outcome of the elections is going to be in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is why uh, we should not allow actually the coalition itself to set up a date, but through these uh, roundtable discussions and other mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Because setting up the date on elections is the crucial issue actually to solve the problem. And I do not say I agree with RDN, we should not have elections now. We need to calm down and... Uh, yeah. Very briefly on this, because I wanted to There's jump in with some another question. There's international yeah. involvement in, in mm -hmm. the manner that uh, Julieta is recommended. Uh, the President has just uh, established a commission mm -hmm. to look into the issue of border demarcation with Montenegro, mm -hmm. and some internationals are involved. There's a former U.S. diplomat, there's um, a German expert on exactly the issue of right. border demarcation. Right. So there's, there are some platforms already being established that sure. Juliet is uh, mentioning. Let's not just forget that we have a new momentum of uh, the method that opposition is using now to, to uh, obstruct or to call for early elections. Uh, two political parties now declared that they will not go anymore at the assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, AAK and NISMA, and I would say this takes out Oikos, the, yeah. the, uh, this uh, of the hands of the government the issue of violence because by not going in the parliament then the, the hot potato is in majority's hands, in coalition's hands, because I don't see how they will feel comfortable if the parliament for more than two years from now will be only formed by members of the government mm -hmm. or, or majority that is forming the government. So this is wiser move of opposition mm -hmm. in order to call for new elections because no one can blame them anymore that they are using power as a president to go to election because I would agree if we start using uh, violence, whoever will lose the elections then by violence will call yeah. mm -hmm. for new elections. Mm -hmm. So I think the opposition is also learning by their mistakes. You can say that once or twice it was the way to stop, as they said, these uh, agreements that will harm Kosovo, but then when it prolonged it, it made them not a news anymore. It consists of, of installing violence or vi mm -hmm. violent methods in the government and then also answering with violence because we have also to mention that we see MPs of the opposition being arrested and being jailed every day. So this is also not normal. Yeah. So we cannot pretend that nothing is going on. I wanted to cover one other important issue uh, because our time is unfortunately quite limited. It's a fascinating discussion. We could go on for a long time. And this is the question of the special court that's uh, due to be established later this year in The Hague, uh, Court for Kosovo. And again, when I say contentious, and again, I want to ask each of you, what happens if some major political leaders uh, in Kosovo are called upon uh, or are indicted or are called upon to testify or uh, are, are somehow implicated in some sort of war crimes uh, by the court? How will this impact on the scene in, in Kosovo? Maybe start with you, Ardian. Hmm. Um, that's really a matter of justice, so I would be, be really much reserved in but we have political but talk exactly yeah. political repercussions. Uh, it's good that until now, political uh, spectrum, whole political spectrum, was supportive of this mm -hmm. uh, process. Um, it's not fair that only Kosovo has to establish such a court. Definitely, mm -hmm. not other uh, countries in the region. But if we are faced with um, all these accusations, insinuations, I guess it's much better. Kosovo to establish this court and actually use it as an advantage, as an opportunity to clear yes. up Kosovo's name, the name of the Kosovo Liberation Army, of individuals, mm -hmm. of uh, the accusations that have been uh, lingering around for sure. a very long time. 
political implications. It's not the first time that political leaders from Kosovo have actually voluntarily always uh, handed themselves over to international justice, in this case ICTY. Sure. Uh, it did not necessarily um, cause tremendous uh, 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 changes in the political landscape here. Um, so again, I would n really not very much speculate there, especially since you don't even know who the names are. Uh, we can only assume and... Um, People are guessing. Yeah, ex exactly because of this, I would um, not really like to speculate on go going to the guessing game. How do you see this developing? Uh, well, uh, I do believe that, uh, that uh, it could be uh, very dangerous as far as political stability of Kosovo is concerned and not only, uh, I mean, it's not only limited to Kosovo itself, mm -hmm. but to the region. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, it is an obligation Mm. of uh, the coalition in the government, especially PDK as the largest political party, to do everything possible to calm down the situation, to um, negotiate, to find a mediator, to mm -hmm. uh, really involve uh, all actors of the civil society and overcome the situation. Because, I mean, we in this scenario we have, if someone is indicted, it's going to be too dangerous for the country. So it is up to the coalition, actually, to calm down the situation because it could explode easily. Mm -hmm. And it, the, uh, I mean, this explosion could affect also uh, the neighboring country. So, so it is really, uh, the situation is more serious than, I mean, many people are actually considering. But uh, it is up uh, and uh, it is the obligation of the majority in the parliament simply to find a way and overcome the situation. And they should understand, in spite of the fact that opposition is really using unacceptable methods, mm -hmm. they should not deal, the government should not deal with this issue as the issue of law and order. It is much bigger problem, it is a political crisis, and we should do everything possible to uh, to overcome the situation before the first indictments. Mm -hmm. Just I, one, I don't know why we are singling out uh, PDK, uh, and I'm not uh, here PDK for that position the to talk about in the name of any political party. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I think actually in case of PDK, they've shown a lot of maturity in these last um, almost two years actually, especially in calming their own uh, voters, sympathizers, and showing a, a lot of political maturity. I think that we, we should talk for everyone and invite everyone to behave in such a manner, not only oh, single of out any political No, 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 no I'm just saying because so they, they are the biggest, yeah. they and, have and more responsibility. They, they show a lot of responsibility and maturity. And, uh, well, we, we they, see they how the situation is. Because the opposition is exactly. only in the parliament, and even now it's not in the parliament anymore, and PDK is on government and has been in previous two mandates or three mandates, you have to be more responsible because you are controlling the institutions. Don't look at and me, I'm <laughs> we are not political here. Adrat, and do you on, see trouble ahead with, with this special court? Special law, I'd rather be short and like to, to answer it in two aspects. First, I always believe this is unjust. The court is being established only for Kosovo, mm -hmm. be mainly because of two reasons. Because you cannot say no to justice, but this is uh, being twice in or how should I say, twice in double standard. First, the only ethnicity that will be uh, investigated and judged by this court is believed to be Albanians. And if you are Albanian, you cannot preside or be part of this court as a prosecutor mm -hmm. or as a judge. So twice it's discriminating. And uh, the other issue, I would say, well, now that it is being established, and we are going to see the new indictments, you know, Kosovo cannot remain or be hostage to whoever politician can be indicted. We are not saying who will be, but if there are high-ranking politicians, we have to hope that in the end they will be declared innocent, but in the meantime, we have the Kosovo should move on. The, the institutions should work and they should be replaced and uh, Kosovo can stay to see 
what the end result would be. Actually, not replace, but first they should understand, they should resign, resign. beforehand. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. If an indictment would be out, I believe no politician, whoever that is, should stay because uh, then we, that we, undermines we, we the institution. We have many people into power that are indicted and they never even think of resignation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is on that it's note, on that note, we could go on for a long time. This is a fascinating discussion. I'd like to have all three of you back at some future date. I'm sure there'll be occasions. Thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you. It was thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Again, uh, thank you to my three guests for joining me on the show. Unfortunately, we have already come to the end of today's program. I have greatly enjoyed being with you and my colleagues here at RTK. Good night, everyone. Stay healthy, be productive, and do remain optimistic. See you all very soon. Miro Pavshim.